Good morning expats and international students and welcome back to my channel Good Morning Expat. It is day 2 in Rome and let's start it with a visit to the smallest country in the world, the Vatican City. So we are officially crossing uh, the border now. So where I'm standing is Italy and then on the other side of the barricades is the Vatican City, which is the smallest city state of the world, both by area and also by population. Welcome to the Vatican City, which is the smallest independent city-state in the world with its own postal service, banks, issues its own passports and even license plates. The economy is supported by the sales of stamps, souvenirs, entrance fee to the Vatican museums and publication sales. The St. Peter's Basilica is one of the largest churches in the world and Italy's biggest and wealthiest basilica. Established in 1626, it took 120 years to build. So you can see the traditional presepe set up uh, right behind me, uh, which is uh, an important tradition during the Christmas uh, period. And uh, this one is, is quite grand and nice, of course, because it's right in front of the St. Peter's Basilica. The Vatican is the heart of the Roman Catholic Church and the Holy See is the term used for the government of the Roman Catholic Church which is led by the Pope himself. It has been based in the Vatican since 1929 when it was founded as an autonomous state to allow the Pope to exercise its universal authority over millions of Catholics around the world. Traditionally, the ruler of the Vatican is supposed to be the Pope himself and currently it's um, the most revered Papa Francesco or Pope Francis and, and this look, in this location you can buy some postcards and other souvenirs related to him. So very nice message from Pope Francis that he would like to maintain the tradition of creating presepes or the nativity scenes in families and in this location they have created about 100 uh, big and small nativity scenes so we are going to check them out now. And each of these uh, is made really meticulously so you can see for example inside the barns and the houses that they have also put real lights to give it um, a very real life effect and these have been made not just by Italian creators but also creators coming from many other countries The Musei Vaticani or the Vatican Museums house one of the largest art collections of the world including Egyptian mummies. It also has the famous Sistine Chapel which features the Renaissance frescoes by Michelangelo. 
So this complex receives thousands of tourists and visitors per day, but despite that, the facilities over here are really well maintained and well managed. For example, the toilet facility behind me is one of the cleanest public free toilets that I've seen in a very, very long time. So surely this place is really well managed and has all the facilities that uh, visitors need to access. The three main attractions to visit in this complex are of course the St. Peter's Basilica which is right behind me, the Sistine Chapel and also the Vatican Museums. Usually you have to uh, take a ticket to be able to go inside the Vatican Museums through which you access the Sistine Chapel. This area on the other hand is a, it's more, a, it's a bit more open unless you want to go inside the Basilica itself which is also um, admission by ticket. Just at a two minute walk from the Vatican, you will find the Vittorio Emanuele II bridge, which you can see behind me. And then if you take a light walk and turn around, you will find the Castello Sant'Angelo. Rome is also called the city of seven hills and the Palatine Hill is considered to be the centermost hill of these seven and it's also considered to be the first nucleus of the Roman Empire. The Palatine Hill features the remains of the Iron Age settlements and right next to it is the Foro Romano in Italian or the Roman Forum in English which features the ruins of some of the most ancient government buildings here in the center of Rome. It used to be the center of the commercial affairs uh, in the Roman Empire. The full visit ticket, which includes the visit to the Colosseum, the Palatine Hill and the Roman Forum costs 22 euros. In case you're not interested in exploring this area but only focus on the Colosseum, then you can buy the ticket costing 16 euros. Apart from being the political capital of Italy, Rome is also a very busy and big cosmopolitan city. For example, the Roma Termini station is a giant mall in its own right. And of course, there are a lot of tram lines, bus lines and a lot of public transport connectivity available from here. If you happen to stay somewhere around the station, you will not find it hard to navigate across the whole city using the various transport facilities that are available. Of course, in this video, we saw a lot of architectural and cultural sites before, but like I said, Rome is also a cosmopolitan city. So it has access, it has facilities for expats and international students to access like international restaurants, uh, food joints, grocery stores, all, all of the things that you might need as an expat as well. So if you're considering to live here for your future studies or even to do a job over here as an expat, it's a fantastic place to be in. Of course, the cultural charm, the old world charm is the most iconic thing about this place. 
Speaking of international restaurants, I never imagined that I would eat one of the best Thai foods of my life in Rome. This place called Che Kiang Royal Thai in the Lodi area was absolutely fantastic with some of the most friendly staff and great service. If you are in Rome and are somehow looking for Thai food, this is your one-stop shop. Roma, for example, is uh, uh, home to a lot of uh, top multinational companies located in Italy like Enel, Eni. Also, it has the headquarters of Telecom Italia, for example. And the financial district, the AU business district as it is called, is also home to a lot of top companies coming from the energy, oil and gas, uh, even pharma and financial services sector as well. This is on the business front. And then uh, also one other important thing about Rome is the fact that it is the hub of the Italian film industry too thanks to the location of the Cinecita studios which are based over here since many years and which have and a lot of famous movies have been shot in these uh, locations. Just to give you a bit of information about how to get to this beautiful city if you happen to live in Milan or somewhere else in the north of Italy then the best way to come here is by uh, the fast train, which could be Italo or even the fast services, the, the Frecce as they are called, offered by Train Italia. And usually the travel time is around three or three and a half hours. Many of the trains are non stop too. And uh, the frequency is fantastic, so they run like every 20 minutes. So, in fact, there are a lot of people who, who commute regularly between Milan and Rome for work purposes too. Uh, so the connectivity is really fantastic. Uh, it's better than flying if you're uh, in the north of Italy because you would end up taking pretty much the same amount of time even if you take a one hour flight with all the checks and everything that you have to do at the airport. But with the train the journey is really seamless, you get to enjoy some fantastic views uh, on the way. And uh, with the first class, for example, tickets, smart, etc., you also get some free coffee and snacks. So it's, it's an enjoyable train ride altogether. And that's my personal recommendation to go for if you are coming, if you're traveling from the northern part of Italy uh, to Roma. So this is the inside of the Roma Termini station. And there are a lot of self-service counters here and also counters from where you can buy tickets on spot if you need to, if you don't happen to have them reserved online. And uh, from here you can also get the direct shuttle for the Fiumicino airport which is the international airport of Rome, it's the biggest one uh, in Italy if I am not wrong. And on the first level here there is a very big uh, food court area so if you have to spend a couple of hours uh, before your uh, train then you can go and have a nice lunch, coffee or snack upstairs. It's, it's a very giant place with, with several options available. So like I said this place is like a mall in itself but apart from the food court and the eating outlets there are also a lot of shopping outlets so now it's time to head back to milan with the 14.5 train with italo the high speed one that i talked about which is going to take me to milan in three hours so if you liked watching this video uh, do hit the like button, don't forget to hit the bell icon and do subscribe to my channel for more such fun videos. The Vatican is located within the city limits of the city of Rome but it is a country in its own right with its own calling code, uh, with its own uh, postal code for example and uh, therefore consequently it's, it has its own post office as well that you can see uh, at my back.